Welcome cousins near and far. Today we're going to be discussing chromosome mapping with admixture. To get the most out of this video, you're going to want to be familiar with chromosome mapping. So if you haven't seen it already, please watch my video, Introduction to Chromosome Mapping. I'll put the link in the description box below. That said, let's learn about admixture and how it maximizes the results of your chromosome mapping project. So what is admixture, or more specifically, genetic admixture, when dealing with genealogy? It is defined as, quote, the presence of DNA in an individual from a distantly related population or species as a result of interbreeding between populations or species who had been genetically isolated and developed unique gene pools. Admixture results in the introduction of new genetic lineages into a population. End quote. So what is this actually saying? To break it down, consider medieval times as an example. We have remote villages where the communities do not travel far. They tend to stay in the same areas for generations. There is an average of three to five generations born in a hundred year span. How many of you knew who your second great grandparents were prior to being interested in family history? And who were your third great grandparents? In these villages, at a time when it was quasi acceptable to marry cousins, after two to three generations, it was harder to tell if you were marrying a relative. With limited options to expand the gene pool, chances were that everyone in a small village was related on some level. As the DNA folds in on itself again and again, it is creating combinations of DNA that are specific to that village. Ergo, if you test DNA from people or remains in that village, you can discover the common genes they carry. Today, when we do a DNA test to find our roots, if our DNA matches the identified genes of a specific village, then we know we have an ancestor who lived there whose DNA we inherited. We can expand this idea to a population within a region, to a country, or specific tribe or people. How does admixture work with chromosome mapping? By starting with chromosome mapping, we produce a map of our chromosomes with segments identified for our different ancestral branches. Let us use Amerindian admixture for our example. Over on GEDmatch, we run our DNA through an admixture program. For Amerindian, we'll select the World 9 project. We can see the red spikes indicating Amerindian admixture. We can see the numbers and how they match the numbers on our chromosomes, how we would see them when chromosome mapping. We compare these Amerindian admixture numbers against our chromosome map. For me, I have a Native American ancestor identified on this specific branch of my tree, which is identified along this segment. The Native American admixture spikes inside this previously identified segment should align with this known ancestor. We just continue to hone in and refine the information we have to bolster our findings. When you have a paper trail and a chromosome map, you have a verified ancestor. In the case of Native American ancestry that has fewer paper trails, you can follow those paper trails as best you can, chromosome map as far back as you can, then add admixture. And this can give you a highly probable verification, even if you're missing a few generations. To see the power of chromosome mapping with admixture, check out my Mary Sweetwater video, which I'll link in the description box below. Happy hunting, my friends.